Stay tuned for a focused special report on the race for the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. Meet the candidates running for the 132nd and 133rd House districts and find out where they stand on the issues that matter to you right now on Focus. Focus is for our community. Focus showcases the people, the places, and the issues that matter to you. Focus on what matters. You never know what you're going to see when you tune into Focus. Support for Focus is provided by Univest, Banking Insurance Investments, Fellowship Community, Continuing Care with Spirit, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to this Focus Special Report on the 2016 race for the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. I'm Laura McHugh. This forum aims to help you learn more about your future legislators and encourages a respectful exchange on the issues that matter to you. Coming up, you'll meet the candidates running for the 133rd District, and we begin with the 132nd District. Here's a map of the 132nd Legislative District for the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. The 132nd Legislative District covers part of Lehigh County. It includes part of the city of Allentown and part of South Whitehall Township. Running to represent the 132nd District, incumbent Democratic Representative Mike Schlossberg and Republican Ben Long. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you, Laura. Representative Schlossberg, we'll begin with you. Introduce yourselves to our viewers. Sure. And first of all, Laura, thanks to you and everybody at PBS for having us. I'm really excited to have this opportunity. And Ben, it's great to be here with you, too. I know there was some confusion about whether or not you were going to be able to make it the last second, so glad you could come out. Absolutely. For those of you who don't have a chance to know me, my name is Mike Schlossberg. I'm a state representative, a husband, a father and a homeowner in the city of Allentown. I'm running for re-election because I'm proud of my record, proud of the fact that I've worked tirelessly to bring dollars home to our community schools and to use that money to hold the line on property taxes. Proud of my record in using my own struggles with mental illness to help fight the stigma that surrounds mental illness, depression, anxiety, addiction, things like that, and to pass meaningful legislation that's helped people who have been victims of domestic violence, to protect young children, and to help rape victims better escape their abusers. I am not an ideologue. I am a compromise and relationship-driven legislator. I'm somebody who focuses on building the right relationships to get results and to bring money, jobs, and real legislation home to the 132nd District. If that's what you're looking for, then I hope to earn your vote again. Thank you, Mike. Ben, would you yeah, introduce, yeah, thank you, introduce Laura. yourself to Yeah, thank voters. you, Laura, and PBS 39, and, and for Mike for being here to discuss the issues. Uh, my name is Ben Long. I'm running for state representative here in the 132nd District. Uh, when I first decided that I was going to be a candidate in the 132nd District, I knew that I was going to have to do things differently. Uh, I knew that I was going to have to go to places and talk to people that normally our politicians on both sides of the aisle uh, don't typically go to or, or, or talk to. And so I have taken it upon myself to knock on 13,000 doors within our district. I've met with community leaders, crime watch groups, unions, just about anybody that I need to talk to to ensure that my message is heard. I look forward to uh, this forum today to discuss my vision for a better community. Uh, a community uh, in which is free of, of ghost voting and pay-to-play corrupt politics. Um, I believe uh, that the greatest power lies within the individual and in the family, and we will be most successful when we work to uh, provide family-sustaining jobs um, by in working to empower the private sector. So thank you, and I look forward to this forum today. Ben, we'll begin with the first question for you. What do you believe is the number one issue facing the community you're asking to serve, and how do you propose to address it? Uh, absolutely. Uh, there's a couple things, uh, but first off, I think there's a, there's a lack of integrity within our political system. Um, as I've talked with folks in the district, they, they're disenfranchised by, by our politicians. They feel uh, abandoned um, by the way things have gone, the dysfunction that has been created. And uh, I'm a fresh face. You know, I'm, I, I'm somebody uh, with not much to lose, and I have, uh, I have been willing to say what is true and what is right. And uh, that's what I'm going to continue to do and, and to work hard um, for the people of this district. Uh, you know, I'm a fighter. I always have been. I always will be. And uh, this isn't about what's right for the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, uh, but this is most certainly what's right uh, for the people of this district. Um, so working to in bring integrity back into our system is something that I'm absolutely going to be able to do. I'm not part of the good old boys and not a part of the establishment. Um, I'm somebody uh, from this area who grew up here working to make a difference. 
Representative Schlossberg, what is the number one issue facing our community and how do you propose to address it? Well, that's an easy one. Number one issue facing the people of the 132nd District is increasing state investment in education and using that money to hold the line on property taxes. The state of Pennsylvania ranks 46 in the nation in terms of overall support for our schools. We rank 50th in terms of ed in terms of equity. That means that the difference between the richest school district and the poorest school district is massive, and that disproportionately hurts the kids in school districts like Allentown, but also in fast-growing school districts like Parkland. That's number one. Number two, we have to stop our obsession with standardized testing. As any parent or any teacher can tell you, every second that we spend working on a standardized test takes away from real instruction time. And number three, we have to increase children's access to early childhood education. One out of every six students in the city, in the Lehigh Valley, have access to high quality early childhood education. That's even worse in the city of Allentown, and there's nothing more important for a kid's academic career than getting them into a good school. That's why I've tried to advocate for new forms of funding for early childhood ed. Go ahead. Uh, I, you know, I, I just want to respond uh, and, and say that uh, in this country and in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania specifically, we have invested more money in education every single year. Yes, through the Corbett administration and now through the Wolf administration. So it's a fallacy that has been promoted. One thing that we can work on for sure is in, in terms of uh, fairly distributing our funding, um, which is something that was passed by the legislature to um, a, fair, a fair funding formula, which was vetoed by the governor when he video, vetoed the fiscal code. Um, that's something that we can do to ensure that per student, every student, whether they're in an urban school district or a suburban school district, are getting adequate funding. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention that Representative Schlossberg fails to talk about is how he's going to pay for some of these programs. How are you going to pay for uh, early childhood uh, intervention, which is something that obviously, ultimately, everybody would want, but we have a limited uh, way in which we can pay for things. Uh, there's only so many tax dollars to go around, and currently, property tax owners are feeling the pinch more and more every single year with school districts having to raise taxes because of the failure of the state legislature to reform issues such as pension, which is causing um, school districts to be handcuffed in terms of what they're able to, to do. Um, so again, I just wanted to clarify a few, a few points there. Okay. How would you well, propose to fund that? In, in all fairness, Ben, I mean, you're new to the community, so you probably aren't familiar with what happened a few years ago. Governor Corbett cut funding. Allentown, you know, you can laugh as much as you want, but I don't think 400 teachers getting laid off in the city of Allentown and 100 in Parkland School District is funny. This is a real issue. This hurt our property values. This hurt our children. This hurt our property taxes. Now, again, of the two of us, I'm the only one up here who actually pays property taxes. Property taxes in the city of Allentown, in the Allentown School District, went up 20% over a four-year period as a direct result of Corbett funding cuts. Now, you can have a conversation, of, and again, you keep laughing, and that's fine. Because you're, but you're, it's, you're, you're, you're telling ben, lies. You're telling lies to the ben, people ben, of this district. Can, can I just finish yeah, my sentence? You can Thanks. finish your sentence. And then, I, then I, we're going like to hear I'm so happy to be more than happy to. The only way you reduce property taxes in the long run is by increasing the state share of education spending. Now, the, depending on how you actually look at the numbers, you wind up being in a situation where the Allentown School District has had massive staff layoffs as a direct result of the state's lack of ability to fund education. That, in turn, resulted in massive property tax hikes in Allentown. And again, I'm a property tax owner. I own a home on, with my wife on 19th Street. I felt that pinch along with every single property owner in Allentown. First, first of Mr. all, Langer's first response. of all, Mike, um, it's unfair to say that I'm not from this community. Last I checked, you were born and raised in New Jersey. When did you move in in the 132nd district? I have been living, first of all, you know how the districts are carved up. You know that the districts are extremely gerrymandered. I grew up in South Whitehall Township. My family is from the west end of Allentown. My mom grew up on 19th Street, as a matter of fact, 19th and Highland, up mm -hmm. the street from where you live. Oh, cool. So I, I am from this area. I grew up in this area. Uh, I, I know what this, what this community is facing. And, and so to, to tell, that, tell, tell a lie that I am not from this community, when I have lived here my entire life, is, is something that you need to, to get off of. As far as me not being a property tax owner at this point, yes, I'm not a property tax owner, but I'd like to be at some point. We need to increase the accessibility for folks to be homeowners in the city of Allentown. There was a, a point one time at one time in the city where homeownership was up about 70%. We're now down to 15 to 20 percent in certain parts of the city. Mm -hmm. That's never good. You don't have a tax base to fund the schools. You don't have a, a structure and, 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 and a, a continual uh, stability within the city. And so uh, those are just a few things that I, that I wanted to point out. Okay. So I'm, I am from this area. I grew up here. I am invested in this community. My sister's a principal in Allentown School District. 
Um, my father is on a school board in Par at Parkland. Um, my mom is a retired school teacher. I am invested in this community, Michael, and I think that's unfair of you to state that I'm not. I'd like to move on. I'd like to talk about um, dovetailing on the topic of education, some of the safety issues that we've seen mm -hmm. in your district, mm -hmm. uh, which includes a large portion of the city of Allentown. Mm -hmm. There have been multiple incidents of students getting involved in altercations with police and with each other. And I want to know from you, what can be done, if anything, from a policy point of view to better take care of these issues and better take care of the students who are attending the districts in your sure. school? Well, two things. First, school and first district. of all, I'm sorry, but I do have to respond to that last statement you made. You are from the community. There's no doubt about that. But I've lived in the 132nd district in the city of Allentown since 2001. Let's move I, on and answer this question. Okay, no problem. Um, there are things that actually can be done at a statewide level. First, there's the obvious one. We actually have to make sure that we're adequately funding school resource offices and make sure that we're providing dollars for schools to hire school districts and to hire police officers. That's number one. Now, that's the immediate thing. Number two is the long term. You can't have safe, safe schools if you don't have safe communities, if you're not adequately providing for real employment, adequately providing for real education. A big part of the reason we have safety issues, the ones that we do have in the city of Allentown, is because we have class sizes that break 30 sometimes. You can't actually have safe schools unless you have safe classrooms with adequate staffing to teacher ratios. Mr. Long? Yeah, first of all, yes, there are things we can do in terms of funding, in terms of more uh, school resource officers as well as uh, police officers within the city. We're down uh, now and we need to increase that, but uh, there's something that I really need to state that, it, that it, we're, we're failing to recognize. Um, the way I was raised is you respect authority, period. And that includes teachers, that includes law enforcement. And we need to, as leaders within the community, show our support for law enforcement. As you mentioned, there's been some altercations between students and law enforcement, which is unthinkable in my mind. And so I stand in support of our law enforcement. I stand in support in the tough job that they have to do. And ultimately, change is going to have to start at home. And that's, that's where respect is learned. That's where, um, that's where ultimately we're going to have to, uh, the greatest change is going to have to lie. So we're almost out of time, and I wanted that to save fast. some remarks. Jeez. I wanted to save you each about <laughs> up to a minute for closing remarks. Okay. Representative Schlossberg, we'll begin with you. Well, thank you very much, Laura. Again, thanks to you and thanks to PBS. For those of you who are watching at home, I think it's pretty clear that there are real differences between the candidates. You have somebody with experience, with long-term community roots, somebody with a record of success, somebody who's worked in the private and public sector to get things done. I think that person is me. I'm proud of my record, proud of what I've done over the past four years, and I hope to earn your vote once again. Thank you. Mr. Long. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Laura, and thank you to Mike. Um, you know, what I, what I wanted to state is I think it's pretty clear that we have a, a choice, and it's, it's much bigger than a choice between a Republican and a Democrat. Um, what we have here is a choice between are the people comfortable in this district with the likes of Kathleen Kane, Rob McCord, and Ed Pulaski? If so, then Mike Schlossberg's your guy. If you're comfortable with the establishment and status quo, then Mike Schlossberg's your guy. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? That's a question you have to ask yourself. But if you want somebody who's a fresh face, who's going to fight for you and fight on your behalf, then I'm your guy. I'm going to lay it all on the line to do what is right for the people of this district. I'm a fighter. I always have been. I always will be. I'm not interested in the status or the label. What I want to do is go get to work and get things done and return integrity back into our political system. And so I hope that on Tuesday, November 8th, I have earned the vote of both Republicans and Democrats and everybody in between. Uh, so thank you, Laura, and I thank you for hosting this forum today. Ben Long, Mike Schlossberg, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Coming up next, we'll meet the candidates in the race for the 133rd Pennsylvania House District. Here's a map of the 133rd Legislative District for the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. The 133rd Legislative District covers part of Lehigh County. It includes part of the city of Bethlehem, Hanover Township, Salisbury Township, and Whitehall Township as well as the boroughs of Catasauqua, Copley, and Fountain Hill. And running to represent the 133rd District, Democrat and incumbent Representative Daniel McNeil and Republican David Maloney. Thank you both for joining us. Yeah. Representative McNeil, we'll begin with you and an introductory statement. Oh, we're starting now? Thank you. My name's Dan McNeil and I represent the 133rd District. Uh, this will be my third term running for the district. Uh, my main concern is I love working for my constituents, my number, my number one reason to run. Number two are my other priorities, which would be the heroin, uh, 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 oh, excuse me, the, the opium problem in this state, education, good wages, and uh, 
uh, what was the, I forgot the other one, which it was, but those are my four. And if you like me, look at my voting record. I don't think we'll be hammering each other in the election since our third time with each other. And I respect Mr. Maloney, and I hope he respects me the same way. And whoever wins in November, God bless them, and here we go. Let's have our debate. We'll discuss those issues in more depth coming up after we hear from David Maloney. Hi. Um, in the last election, I, I came close. I got uh, about 45 percent. I think people see that I'm sincere. Um, Mr. McNeil is also uh, sincere. Representative McNeil, sorry, is also sincere in his desire to to represent the district. Um, I think that we have some differences, uh, and and we'll be talking about those today. I'm sure somewhere down the line. Um, my goal is to represent the people of the district uh, as individuals and to work to. Uh, support them in every way possible. I want to begin with one of the things that you brought up, Representative McNeil, and the what many are calling an epidemic in our region, uh, opioid ad abuse um, and prescription painkiller abuse, which is leading to the use of heroin in our community. Um, that has been an issue for you that you've been working on over the past several months. What can be done at a policy level? And I'll pose the same question to you, Mr. Maloney. We'll begin with you, Representative McNeil. Oh, okay. What can be done at a policy level? Well, first of all, it's money. And there's no money in Harrisburg. I mean, in this last budget, we asked for $34 million, and we wound up getting fifteen. dollars uh, Halfway houses, we have, a, we, we have to get these kids into a halfway house. They do not belong in jail. This is a sickness. Another one of my priorities is these pharmaceutical companies have to be slashed. They're, they're, they're giving prescriptions out that are 30 days prescription of a fentanyl, oxycotton, Valium, whatever they may be, where it's not required. I, I'm not saying everybody should not get a prescription. What I'm saying is when they leave the hospital, try to get them a seven day prescription and if they really need the pill, let the doctor rewrite the prescription for them. Another big problem with heroin, it's cheap. You can buy a bag of heroin for $8. And th that's the sad part about it because what happens is they're buying eight, five, six bags of heroin for 50 bucks. Kids with no jobs are selling three, four bags to get it used for free. Number one, fentanyl, stronger than heroin. That's where a lot of overdoses are starting. They're getting fent fentanyl. Now I hear Mexico is mass producing fentanyl and bring it into the country. Now, I read in a paper the other day that there's a new drug that they use to tranquilize elephants with, which is stronger than fentanyl. And you have a lot of kids that are, that are using these drugs. I, I, I just don't understand it. I had my first town hall meeting. I thought I'd get about 50 people there. I got over 200 people at my first meeting. And the thing that woke me up, because nobody was educated about it because nobody would talk about it. In other words, not in my house is not going to happen, but it is happening in the houses. And the parents sometimes get weak and uh, they just fall f for the kids and, and they're not getting any help. What I suggested is they go in, they go, they go and get help for three days, and then when they come out, they send the kids home, which is very wrong. What I'd like to do is set up halfway houses where they can come in and relate to people that recovered from the drug that they have somebody to relate to and then move them on. But the thing is, that's all fine and good, but the person that has the problem has to want to correct themselves too. David Maloney, how would you address this issue, which is um, becoming a major issue not only in your district but statewide? Well, there's, there's two aspects to it. Um, one is treatment and one is figuring out how to, how to make it so that these synthetic medications aren't put in heroin to begin with. Uh, I mean, one of the things, they, they put the fentanyl and this new drug into the heroin to make them significantly more addictive in order to make it so that they get addicted to heroin and then keep on taking it. Um, the, the, one of the reasons why people move to heroin is because uh, they say they have pain. And then, because uh, I, I work with pain a lot, and I see how uh, prescriptions are used and misused and such like that. And, and, and so 
The physicians give a prescription saying take this much per day, this many times per day. What it should be is here, take aspirin or, or some type of acetaminophen or something like that. And then um, if you need to take an, an oxycodone or something like that, take it at that time to help you sleep or, or, or because the pain's extreme. Um, they, they, they have to learn to work without the addictive medications right away and then also educate the patient that this is an addictive substance and what we need to do is to, um, is to reduce the amount of times you take it. And so the, I think people are smart enough to pick that up. Uh, so that would be one aspect that probably isn't addressed very much. An another aspect is, is the treatment. Um, the, the treatment has to be uh, done with halfway houses and, and such like that. But at the same time, we, we have to be able to steer the people away. We're talking kids because a lot of kids get injuries and, and, and they tend to be more malleable. And so what happens is they tend to get addicted to things faster. And so we need to, we need to work with them and educate them as to what's going on. I'd like to switch gears now and talk a little bit more about job creation and economic development. And we'll begin with you, Mr. Maloney. What can be done on the statewide level to promote economic development in our region? Well, government doesn't create jobs. Government allows jobs to happen. And the best way to do that is by reducing hyper-regulation, which I think occurs a lot in the state. And so we need to work with regulations uh, to make it so that so that uh, it's it's a reasonable process to bring uh, manufacturers back into the area. It's interesting. There's there's business cycles. We had a huge cycle with Bethlehem Steel and and all and all the all the uh, labor that was involved with that. The labor didn't require levels of education so much in in, in most of it. And so what happened is that went to other countries. And now we're looking at it coming back, but we're lo also looking at, for the ones that are coming back, that you need more education. So we need to focus on technical education. Everybody talks about college education. We need to focus on technical education to work with these things. Representative McNeil, what can, we, what can be done on the state level in the areas of job creation and economic development? Basically, as far as the state co is concerned, most of the big companies coming in want tax relief, of course. They ask for the tax, like you have the NIS, you have the CRIS, and all that. But, but other than that with the state, I don't know if there's that much more they can do. I mean, companies come in like, I can speak about Lehigh Valley. I think right now we're ready for a big boom. Another thing, we have a labor force here that can supply the manpower right now. We don't need foreigners coming in here to build our buildings. We have enough man force in this Lehigh Valley. Look what's happening in Bethlehem. Look what's happening in Allentown. The FedEx building is coming in. We just broke ground for that two weeks ago. That's the largest FedEx building in the whole country. Lehigh Valley right now has not seen the peak of their boom yet. Most companies want to be in the Lehigh Valley because we're, we're within 300 miles of the nation's population. And FedEx is a big truck route company. In fact, they're so animated. I mean, what's coming in, and then once FedEx is established, you're gonna see many, many, many more companies coming in here because they'll have accessibility to get their mail out. So you're gonna see a lot of companies. And on the books right now, labor has been pretty good. And as far as education, David might be right, but I think I'm a little bit smarter than that. You need apprenticeships. We have our men here that are ready and willing to work and have the qualifications. You can't just bring guys in from out of state to build buildings or somewhere else that have no education. If our labor force, say, has no work for six months, company comes in and says, can you give me 100 men? I can give you 150 qualified men, and we're ready for it. In the area of education, is Pennsylvania adequately funding its public education system? Uh, no. Education is... It's, there's so many aspects of education right now. Education to me is college. Uh, we have uh, at the community college up there, you can go up there and learn any trade you want. It's not used as good, L LCTI should be used dramatically. They, anything you want to be from a beautician to an astronaut is there. And I think it should be useful. 
college teachers. I don't know about teachers. I think the biggest problem with education right now is the charter school system. First of all, I can tell you for the city of Allentown how to pay $17 million to support the charter schools. Don't get me wrong, I have nothing against charter schools, but anything that affects K through 12 bothers me. If you have a gifted child and there's a charter school for that child, that's fine. But why does big business have to come in, make all this money on charter schools, these kids are going for free, and then they're paying, they're paying the owners of the charter school what it costs per student to send to a high school. I think it's totally wrong. Mr. Maloney, is education adequately funded in Pennsylvania? I, I think that it is pretty much adequately funded. It's just the funding is, is off kilter. I think uh, charter schools are useful. I think that uh, just as any new business starting up, there's going to be cases where it's abused or, or misused or just not done right. And so as, as we work through all these things, and don't forget, there are also, besides, besides all the normal business problems that you have with a, new, with a new function, you also have the antagonistic aspect of it, of a lot of the, uh, the, teacher, the teachers' unions and such like that being against that. And so that they have to work against that as well. You know, that's, that's a point, and I think that's important. The thing with the charter schools is that they're able to focus more on, say, a trade school of different kinds, or uh, something that kids are particularly good in. Um, as far as generalized schooling, I'm not sure about that, but we also have the Catholic schools and the other kinds of schools as well. I think that uh, they, we should also be looking at some type of voucher system to make it so that the Catholic schools can, can get some money from our system as well. Well, we're nearly out of time. A few seconds, uh, closing remarks from Representative McNeil. Well, we have an election coming up. I hope everybody is comfortable with their votes. I'd appreciate your support and let's see what happens in November. Mr. Maloney. Well, my goal is to represent the people of the district and for instance, one of the things that I'd like to see happen is I'd like to see, you know, you get the, the franked mail, the mail that you get from your state representative and says, here's the things I've done for you. It should also say, here's the, here's the things that are coming up. Please contact my office with your input. I think we need more uh, voter and constituent participation in our voting process and I'm I'm willing to vote whatever my constituents want and I, and I think Mr. McNeil would too however we we have to we have to gain that understanding through getting out meeting the people and also hearing what they have to say by requesting that information David Maloney representative Daniel McNeil thank you so much for joining us and thank you for watching. Join us next week to meet more of the candidates in the race for the Pennsylvania State House of Representatives.